Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a website, head over to squarespace.com slash Paul Messner. So the cold weather is definitely upon us and snow's just around the corner. But does that mean you need a four season tent when it comes to winter camping? Or can you get away with something that's a three season tent? I've chosen two tunnel style tents to compare. So I've got the three season Wild Country Zephos Compact One and then we've got one of my favourites, which is the Tarp Tent Scarp One. This is a four season tent. We'll look at some of the differences between three season and four season. And ultimately, you just want to find out if you really need to shell out the extra money on a four season tent. So we'll start with the Wild Country Tent. This is a single hoop design. It's got a support pole at either end to give it some extra rigidity. There is some ventilation mesh under here as well. And to be fair, this tent is pretty good when it comes to four season, as it goes almost right down to the ground, where a lot of three season tents tend to have a gap to give you better ventilation during the warmer months. So when we look inside, most three season tents tend to have a lot more mesh than this. So this is a pretty good example of a three season tent that would work quite well in colder conditions. Ideally, you want more of a solid when it comes to winter time here in the UK. There is only one guy out point on the side. So when it gets really windy, this may struggle a little bit when it comes from different directions. And also if you get some snow loading on here, this is gonna push down quite easily. Now moving on to the Scarp One. Although it does look very similar in design, there are one or two subtle differences on this tent. So it has got the main single hoop not always the case, but the poles on four season tents tend to be a little bit stronger and thicker. This tent does also have pole structures on the corners. So these give the tent a much more robust structure. So most four season tents have a very strong structure. So with this one, you can also add um, cross section poles, which gives it a really robust feel to it, which makes them really good in windy conditions. And when you've got snow loading on top so again this tent has got a mainly solid inner there is some meshing at the top however something like my Hilleberg Solo uh, that has got a complete solid inner um, where you can pull like a curtain down which exposes a little bit of net in there and the inner on the Solo has got a DWR coating on it so it allows any condensation just to run off it so speaking of condensation when it comes to winter you're going to get quite a lot more of it because you're going to have a warmer atmosphere inside your tent um, meeting the colder atmosphere of the, you know, the outside of the fly. This tent doesn't have a great deal of ventilation at the top end of the tent, you know, so it doesn't give you a good airflow as such. Whereas a lot of the four season tents have a few more venting options at the top. Um, the Solo has got a complete mesh at the top which is covered with a fly sheet that's separate. And on this tent, there are options where you can you know, raise this end up here. You can also alter the tension on this you know, to raise the fly up and lock it in place. The main thing for me when it comes to choosing a winter tent is that you've got something that is um, a lot more robust in you know, worse conditions, really. So if you're getting 50 mile an hour winds or heavy snow, then something like the Scarp One or Hilleberg Solo is going to be ideal when it comes to standing up to the elements. Days where you're glad you brought a Hilleberg. So does that mean that you can't use your Zephos one when there's a little bit of light snow and wind? Of course you can, but you just need to be a little bit more considerate sometimes about the conditions you're going to be in and you know, maybe where you pitch your tent. So I've camped in snow on Penny Fan in a Van Gogh Zenith, which is very similar to this. But given the choice, I'd personally go for something that is a dedicated four season tent. Whoa. So the only reason I've got this tent is because Squarespace have been sponsoring my videos. So a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this one today. If you don't know who Squarespace are, it's a, a one-stop platform where you can create a website of your own and you don't need any sort of coding experience or any idea of how to build a website, to be honest with you. 
So me and Joe use the website for sharing videos, photos, and some of the new products in the merch store. But you can use a website for almost anything, and there's loads of templates so you can customize to get that unique look. So if you want to have a go at building a website of your own, then click the link in the description below, or head over to squarespace.com slash Paul Messner. You'll get a totally free trial and then 10% off your first purchase. So another couple of things to consider. Generally, you're going to be warmer in a four season tent than you are in a three season tent. Um, the solid inners and the way that the tents are designed, you're going to keep the cold temperatures out and your little microclimate inside is going to keep you warmer. But if you're using a three season tent, I'll try and pick one that's got quite a lot of solid inner to it. You can also um, do your best to pitch the tent a little bit lower. So make sure that you've got everything adjusted so you're pitching the tent as low to the ground as possible. Um, in summer months you probably want these raised up a little bit to get some airflow. But in the winter <laughs> you want to keep the breezes out. So also with four season tents coming right to the floor, um, in snowy conditions that reduces spin drift, keeps the snow out of your vestibule. So while I'm here, I may as well show you around the tent so you can see some of the differences for yourself. So Scarp 1 is a little bit bigger footprint, not a lot, but it's got two vestibules and two doors. So that gives it a slight edge. You can actually get two people in, in this tent if you're quite close. So both of these tents have the option to alter the inner and the vestibule size. Although on the wild country, you just have to unclip it and then just move it in a little bit. Loads of headroom inside the Scarp 1. Also incredibly long, so if you are six foot plus, yeah, this is ideal for you. Look how much room's at the end. You can see what I mean about squeezing two people in as well. So that's what I mean about having a little bit more ventilation to help reduce condensation. And have a look pretty getting out of tents. The Scarp's also got better tie-out points, so much more adjustability here. There is an extra tie-out here to give you a bit more rigidity. Also a double tie-out here to give you more pole strength. So this has been recently upgraded. Used to only have one, uh, but since they've upgraded it to two, um, you know, strength has improved dramatically. Yeah, there's not so much adjustment here for um, pegging out and adding extra tension. And this one only has the one tie-out point across the main hoop. So these tunnel tents can get quite flappy in the wind, but then again, so does the Hilleberg Solo. Um, if you've got 40 mile an hour winds, you're not getting much sleep unless you put the earplugs in. So there's not quite so much headroom in here, is there? Um, it's definitely not as long as the Scarp. Although it's comfortably big enough for me. You can see the ventilation on the end there. The door tie-back system isn't as good um, so this does flap around a little bit I tend to bring a closed peg with me and then just roll it up and clip it on so when you zip closed you haven't really got the same ventilation you'd have to stick something in there and then you're compromising the you know, water or something getting in so could do with a little proper vent up here I think nice bit of space there though so there's room to cut your snap all in all, it's a great tent if you haven't got the budget for something like a Scarp or a Hilleberg. So if you are thinking of upgrading to a four season tent, just make sure you do your homework because there are a number of manufacturers out there that claim to be four season tents, but they're clearly not. So the Nature Hike Cloud Peak 2 is a good example of this. It's a great tent for the money. However, it's marketed as a, in a lot of places as being a four season tent and it most definitely isn't. And if you head to any of the forums or Facebook or anything like that uh, and ask which four season tent should I buy, a lot of people will tell you to buy something like the Scarp One or Hilleberg Solo, but you don't always need to spend that kind of money. It's quite fashionable now for everybody to be using expedition style tents, um, which are uh, superb bits of kit, but for a lot of the time here in the UK, it is overkill. But if money's no object and you want something that'll stand up to anything, and definitely go check out the Hilleberg tents. So just to finish off, if you want to go camping this winter, you know, in the high winds or in the snow, then a tent like this um, is a great addition to your kit. But don't feel that you've got to spend loads of money on buying a new four season tent. Something like this will do the job. Make sure you've got a decent sleeping bag and sleeping mat. 
I've slept quite comfortably with just a bivvy and a tarp with a decent bag and sleeping pad. And if you want to see one of my earlier videos when I was camping in a bivvy bag in the snow, then check out this video here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.